Welcome to the Happy Insights Podcast. My name is Happy Ali. I want to welcome you to today's show. Today's topic is about reincarnation. And I'm very excited because I have a guest on the show. His name is Jerome DeWitt, and he is a past life regressionist. And I think he would be the perfect person to have this chat with. So welcome to the show, Jerome. Thank you so much for having me here. I love talking about reincarnation and past life regression. You know, I feel like I know so much about the topic from all my own studies and my near-death experience and all that stuff. And I originally just wanted to do the show on my own and I did a version of it on my own. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be amazing to have someone who actually gets to experience past lives with other people? So I am really, really grateful that you're on the show today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so your own and I both have basically a lot of answers and we don't have a lot of questions personally. So we had to seek out people's questions and I am going to ask these questions as if I don't know the answers to them or if they sound too obvious. It's just for me, it's going to feel silly, but I'm going to ask other people's questions. Like, for example, is there such a thing as reincarnation? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um well yes you're asking me so um i i would say yes of course there is um as a kid i, I i'm from a catholic background and there's no such thing as reincarnation in catholicism but i kind of knew that there was more to life than just this one singular life this is just an inner knowing i had and then i started reading about it in my 20s um I forgot what it was, maybe out of body experiences, or I just knew that the, the soul would continue onward beyond this current physical life. And then um, in 2006, I studied with Dolores Cannon and was trained as a past life regressionist. And I've had amazing confirming experiences uh, with, with my many, many clients, experiences that could, um, it could be verified. So I had people describe a past life to me that could be fact-checked. I had a woman go into a lifetime as Christina Garrick, Lou Garrick's mom, the legendary American baseball player. And um, she came up with so many, many trivial details during her session. She went and she went and fact-checked them, but still living descendants and relatives of the Garrick family. And everything that she had kind of made up, you know, during her session was actual lived experience. And I've had many of those experiences. So, yeah. So I mean, you have proof, basically. Well, yes. As far as <clears throat> as it's acceptable by, you know, like a scientific community, probably not. But <clears throat> for me, it's proof that there really is such a thing as reincarnation, that we continue onward after this this physical lifetime. My own experience has been different because, first of all, I have a sister that remembers a lot of it or dreams a lot of her past lives and later finds herself in locations where she dreamt it. And the thing about her is she's an artist, so she'll actually draw something and later she'll have proof and show us and be like, see, I told you, I told you. And she's so excited about it. And she says, this is where my child died, for example, or she has a lot of elaborate stories she even had a dream with her husband and they were both together in the dream and they both went their separate ways and they both had the dream and they both had the dream to the point where they were together. Okay. And then when they went off and their separate ways, they both have their own version of what happened after they left. Wow. So that was really cool. And then, you know, once I had my near death experience, just, it was just obvious. I learned so much, but that was not really tangible as much. And then I studied the Kabbalah, which is actually part of the, you know, Judaism. It's this, the spiritual secret part of Judaism, which is the first testament or the is that, is that what it's called? First testament? God, I've been out of that world so long. I don't know neither. <laughs> I've never read The that. original testament is the one, the first one, the Jews believe. And that one is basically completely built around reincarnation. So reincarnation of the soul is basically the premise of all of it. 
Mm. But it's very Earth focused. You know, it's very this world focused, this planet Earth focused. So it's limited in terms of that kind of idea. But there's so many things. There's even stuff that I learned that they said Jesus studied and not studied. He taught reincarnation and it was part of his teachings. And in the third century, when the three different parts of the churches, the ones that believed that Jesus was God, one was the son of God and Holy Spirit, when they merged in the third century to create the Holy Trinity, they just deleted his teachings because they had to introduce hell and hell just did not go along with reincarnation. Yeah. That's what happened. So in terms of religion, the reason I said that is because you said I was raised Catholic, but yeah, even in the origins of the religions, even Islam, because Islam is basically the third chapter of the Bible. Hmm. So the first chapter is the Jews. The second chapter is the Catholics and the Christians and, you know, the variations. The third chapter is Islam. And if Kabbalah is the origin of them all, then reincarnations and everything. I didn't know that. I guess inclusivity is not taught in religions. No, because they all just say that it's their own version. Yeah. But, you know, if you study Catholicism, they're going to talk about Moses. Mm. And Moses is definitely part of the other religion, you know? Right. And Muslims talk about Jesus and Moses. Right. Okay, so back to the subject of reincarnation. I'm assuming anyone that's watching this show or listening to my show already believes in reincarnation. And we just want to kind of dig in deeper and find out about how it all works. The first question that I've been asked, and I was curious about, and I think it's on a lot of people's minds when they first learn about reincarnation, is that do we move up? Are we like a bird first? And do we upgrade to a human and then something else? Or is there like a linear progression in terms of our soul's evolution? There can be. Uh I'm just speaking from my own experience, having done so many sessions with 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 people. Um, some souls choose to have that path. They start off like being part of the atmosphere or maybe part of the earth. I've had a person be like a boulder that was wedged in between two rocks for a lifetime. Um, and then they might move up through the animal kingdom and finally become human beings. That can happen, but it can also be that souls come in... Um, as a guide and for another for another person and you know take on a dog's uh, body or a cat you know a, a pet's body to be able to support their 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 subject um in a very particular way um that can happen or you can be a soul that comes in from another planet or from source and just dips into a human experience just to learn a few things but also to enlighten human consciousness on the planet so i tend to think of what i've learned is that you know as human beings we like to quantify uh, this information but i think from the perspective of the soul things don't work the way that our human minds um want it to work like if it's not this it's got to be that or if it's not white it's got to be black um so i think there's many many different options many of which i have not encountered yet so this is my approximation of of what I think, how I think it works, you know, filtered through my human mind. That being said, I think the next obvious question for me is, do we have a choice? Do we have a choice of how we incarnate or if we do it linearly or the reincarnation process? Is it a choice? Because so many people I know, and because they love to say this, because they want to feel like they're so done with this earth. They say, this is my last time. I'm graduating. I am done. And I always like to tell them, hey, you chose to come here and you're probably going to jump right back in. But what do you think? Is there a choice to all of this? It's an interesting question because I thought initially that we always had a choice, but it seems to be that if we start out um, on this earth journey, um, going through these different stages of life that I just explained, that in the beginning of it, we seem to just be recycled. Just like, yes, you've done one, you're in the in-between life space, and then boom, you're in another one, without there being much of a choice or much consideration as to what kind of life you're going to be having. It's just to get your 
your your first experience with being on Earth. So it's just to do several lives to just feel what it's like, and then once we evolve a little bit, then there is going to be choice in terms of what we want to learn. It becomes more specific. And again, this is what it looks like to me right now. If you ask me next year, it might have been it might have evolved into a different understanding of it. But yeah, I've seen both both um, options. So people just kind of being recycled back out into another lifetime. And then most of the time there is this uh, very deliberate sort of planning of the new lifetime, very deliberate. And yes, we choose all of the experiences, circumstances, um, because on earth, this is how we, we are able to expand. Earth is a fast track learning um, trajectory uh, for souls to learn things quickly because we deal with such a level of density and contrast and duality here, which cannot be found in the other dimensions, uh, dimensional planes or experience. So yeah, this is like advanced soul school. And um, we opt into those horrible experiences that we, you know, that you might know, have had in your own life or that you might know about, not from the personal perspective, you know, from the human, the human being, but as from the soul, you know, we wouldn't learn anything if we're just born and then, you know, our lives is just like easy and we're just, you know, reaching for the snacks and watching Netflix for other day. And that's it. You know, nobody has a life like that as far as I know. So go ahead. Nobody maybe has a fulfilling life like that, at least, you know, maybe somebody would come in just to do that. But what's the point, I guess? Maybe they don't have Netflix up where they are. <laughs> <laughs> but my belief has always been that you know we do have free will at least when we're here yeah but i feel like we are creators so even when you are cycling through you're just adapting to the new environment new density new plane so that probably is a choice too and the fact that you know using the word fact is just not really a appropriate word but it is part of my sentence but the fact that you are choosing to cycle through to adapt was in the initial choice of the soul of the soul correct just because from my understanding the earth is very heavy and dense and it takes a little getting used to which i'm going to go all over the place with these questions so to the viewers and listeners i'm so sorry i hope you're well versed on some of this stuff but i'm so curious about this because there is the concept of star seeds and people that come from other planets and they come to this earth to help raise the vibration of this planet. When other beings from other dimensions and other worlds come to this planet and it's their first time, they obviously don't have the option to cycle through a few times to adapt. So how does that process work? The options that I've encountered are um, imprinting so that we access other souls lived experience to kind of download it into our matrix and then to have that as sort of um yeah working experience to to go from so we're not completely alien you know in this experience here on earth and the second option that i've encountered is that there is enough of kind of a physical life experience present in these other galaxies um that makes souls be able to handle life here on earth and then some people i know and i've heard when it's their first time on this planet they have a really really hard time really hard time yeah because obviously there might be a new soul or a new earth soul that might be cycling through as we speak right now and they're probably having a really hard time on this planet because they're not being imprinted or have had enough physical experience yeah from my perspective, it's always purposeful. So those experiences as well, we bring them in um, to make ourselves comfortable here with um, the unique experience that we're having as a soul, maybe from different galaxies on this planet right now. Um, because as we make ourselves comfortable, we we'll learn how to do that. Then we have that as medicine for others to do the same thing. And when you say comfortable, I like to think that you mean adjusted? That's a better word. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think we're ever comfortable on this planet. I mean, some people are, but the, the rich people, I work with a lot of rich people. 
they're not comfortable. I work with a lot of, well, I don't work with a lot of poor people just because they can't afford my work, <laughs> but but I, I'm friends with a lot of people that don't have a lot of money and uh, they don't have a hard time. They always think money is the one that fixes it. But this experience, I think, I think because it's here, we're here to evolve. It's always going to be a little bit uncomfortable. And then when you cruise a little bit, then there's a discomfort again. So, which brings me to the next question. The next question is, why would we incarnate so many times if it's so rough out here? Well, it's not for everyone. Not every soul incarnates so many times. There's people or souls that come in maybe for just three times to just get some experience here. Um, but yeah, if we choose to incarnate here, it's to be a well-rounded soul to like we're all different parts of source um, gaining experience through our own individual lens, meaning we're all very different. And so we're all having different experiences, even in the same circumstances. And that's kind of what we came here for, to just expand consciousness through being a unique expression of source and then encountering all these crazy and wonderful experiences here on earth. And I really, truly believe that not just us, our soul, our source is curious in nature. It would want to see things from every single perspective possible because we have this hunger for knowledge. And I don't think the hunger for knowledge ends here. I think it continues on. And I think that's probably the, I don't even know if I want to call it the hunger for knowledge, but hunger for experience and understanding that, you know, is on every single dimension that I think expands so far and so far out that makes it to where we would want to be the villain. We would want to be the person who is the nice guy, the bad guy, the one who's being tortured, the one who was the rapist and then the victim, all of that stuff, because it enriches our perspective and our compassion, right? Where does compassion come to in all of this? Is it something that's unique to earth? Or or the level of love or unconditional love. What is because I know we're a planet of emotion. Hmm. So what is it so special about this emotion thing that we're learning on this planet by incarnating here? Um it's wonderful. I just had a client um and I wanted to touch on this because you know your question, like why would we choose to be here um or reincarnate here so many times? Having done this work now for what sixteen years, and I'm, I'm continuously getting the perspective of a person's soul that really wants to be here. You know, it's shifted my own relationship to my identity to where I know that I am a eternal being, just like you are, and just like everybody is, and that there is great beauty to have to experience here because it's it's this is a place that you cannot find anywhere else. And talking about emotion, um, I had this client who, who her soul was wired in in a way where she always, in all lifetimes, she feels a lot. She's here to learn as a soul about emotions. And um, when I took her through the death experience in some past life, she was kind of sad to leave it. It was almost explained like the grass was always greener on the other side. Like when we're in this lifetime, we're trying to like, find the eternity and the oneness and the sourceness of, of it all. But once we're out of it, we go like, well, fuck, you know, I just left it. I want to go back because it was so juicy. There was so many experiences to be had. This is really what I want to do. This is really how I'm going to learn. So in that sense, you know, maybe there could be more compassion for us, for ourselves, um, knowing that this is just a temporary experience going through all of those wonderful and crazy experiences as a tool for learning as a yeah as 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 things that make the game interesting from the soul's perspective in the kabbalah they talked about this concept that to, to truly understand something you kind of have to earn it or experience it or go through the process to really understand it to feel it so and i feel like the nature of a lot of different dimensions and our soul is unconditional love, it would be very, very helpful to be in a world of conditions 
where you would have to really, really learn unconditional love and appreciate unconditional love on a new level. Because if you're just born into unconditional love, sure, it feels good. But you're not grateful the way that you should be. It's like when kids are born into everything. They don't really appreciate it until they lose it and they have to earn it again. So I almost feel like this is our playground to come to learn a deeper version of all the things that we already have and will have again and to make it more rich and to just know it, feel it, appreciate it so much more. Because I feel like anything that you earn, you just feel so much better than when you had it. I know there's so many people, you know, even in relationships, when one person comes on so strong in the beginning and just says, here, I'm yours. The other person usually just says, no, thanks, I'm good. And as soon as that person starts walking away and pulling away, they start craving the other person's attention or physical you know, presence. And all of a sudden, like the love becomes stronger or the yearning. So I think just having something just to hand it to you is very different. And also just learning things from scratch. You know, I always wanted my own business and I didn't really understand what it was. I wanted the freedom. I wanted all the good stuff, but I didn't understand how much went into it. And now that I've learned so much and can put on so many hats, if I feel like every aspect of my world is a different incarnation hmm. that I am choosing because I want to live and experience it. So I, I kind of feel that um, I went on a tangent, but it's kind of the same it's to really understand everything. No, I think you described it really beautifully. It was what I was trying to say. Yeah. Well, that's really, awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So that brings us to another question which was asked, um, do people or souls from other planetary systems, and the, that person used the word aliens, incarnate as well, go through reincarnation? You mean in their particular star system? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah, there might be different lifespans, but yes, same thing. They might choose to leave a certain body or it might just disintegrate or, you know, disappear they might just choose to move on there might be different processes involved um but yeah that's same um yeah it, it, it happens that i um access a lifetime as an alien being through my client and they go through the death experience whatever that might mean in their particular environment and then moving on to another experience maybe going to earth or you know or going to be in source for a little bit but that's for sure so basically they're changing shape in some way or a changing experience or switching experience and but the death process might not be the same as it is for us right but i feel like my inner guides just jumped in right when my friend asked that question and said well it depends on which dimension they're in <laughs> if they're you know from another star system and they're in our dimension then they're going to have different kind of reincarnations. If they're in a higher dimension, they're going to have like maybe longer lifespans. And and since things are more clear, the higher up you are, then it, the more deliberate the death process, if you want to call it death process or the rebirthing process mm. is, as opposed to us where our conscious self doesn't really feel like it has a lot of choice unless you're committing suicide in the ending process. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be the ex experience that we're trying to have here. You know, here we deal with um, the emotions of like loss and grief, having somebody like viscerally depart, you know, the physical experience is is an experience that we're having here when we lose people. Um, and that's not an experience that these alien beings might choose to have in those, in those, in their realms or in their circumstances. It's, there's purpose to it. So let's bring it really close back to home as a human experience. I know so many people, as soon as we talk about death or reincarnation or anything, because a lot of people are afraid of death. Their first question is, what's the death process like? Should I be afraid of death? Is it scary? Yeah, good question. Um, death in itself is not scary as far as I can tell. Um, when I take people through um, a past life and they're going through the death process 
you know, if there's no violence involved, um, the actual moment of separating from the body seems to be one that feels like liberation. Um, whenever I ask a client, like, what does it feel like to no longer be in that body? 99% of the time, they will have this big sigh of relief and they go, oh my God, it feels so good. I feel so free. Um, that life was kind of dense uh, to be in that body. It felt, felt contained and now I feel so much more free. It feels good. So that the dying in itself doesn't seem to be an issue. People describe it as like taking off a coat or something. Oh, that sounds yummy. <laughs> that sounds really good. So I would assume that the dying process, the physical process of dying is probably what could be painful but the death process itself the death as right when you hit that moment it's like just a freeing thing and by the way there are hormones that are released as soon as you're in severe pain to feel numb like mm -hmm. if a animal is bit you know they all of a sudden feel numb and they don't not all of them depending on the circumstances, but sometimes when the pain is too severe, we get hormones released that kind of numb the pain. So mm -hmm. even some of the worst, you know, death processes can be quite painless once that particular chemical is released from your brain. So mm, I didn't know that. So that's a, a different one, a different topic, but that's not a spiritual topic. That's more of a scientific topic. So the next question I want to ask you is a lot of people talk about their past lives as being sometime in the past, as in our Earth's linear time related past and their future lives being in the future, as in right now is 2022. So it will be anything past 2022. So can you have past lives in the future, for example? or future lives in the past? Does it happen all at once? Or how does that work exactly? Yeah, my human mind has been trying to like wrap itself around that concept. Um, what I've encountered so far is that time is a construct of the three-dimensional realm that we find ourselves in. And it's deliberately created um, in this realm to to be able to do the kind of learning that we came here to do. But from the perspective of the soul, there is no such thing as time. Everything seems to be happening in the here and the now. So how I kind of, kind of the working model I use in my, in my brain to kind of understand this is that we're all more or less individuated parts of source consciousness. And we choose to split off into these different experiences that happen if they're taking place in the three-dimensional realm in different times. But from the perspective of the soul, it's all happening right now. So we perceive that we're on a timeline here, like from you know from past to the future, and we're now in the, in the in the present. But that seems to be an illusion, or yeah, just the construct that we use here to be able to learn the things we, we we're, we're learning here. But yeah, in that sense, the name past life regression or past lives does not apply to what the experience actually seems to be. Because everything seems to be happening right now. Have you ever had a person regress to a past life that was in Earth's future? Yes, it has happened. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Dude, that answers that question really well. So they, it was like you know some other year, and the technology was different, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Really, it was. I can remember it. It was fascinating. Really fun. Could you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, this was, and so remember. You know, the future is not set in stone and there's different timelines. It's parallel lives that split off of any moment that they're that we're making a choice. So this is a possible future. So in this future, Earth was more polluted, especially the coastal areas. And um the richer elites, the oligarchs, had um colonized a smaller planet somewhere in our solar system that they would use as a breakaway planet where things were cleaner and better taken care of. And the man in, in the current lifetime was in that future lifetime, <clears throat> a woman who worked in corporate espionage. She was really good at taking on different um, costumes or appearances and which would infiltrate different businesses 
and kind of get their information and sell it to other businesses. And on this planet, well, she described that she was from Seattle, that her family still lived in Seattle, and that people have found better ways to grow food, that there was sort of food distribution by the government, but it was even healthier than the the organic food that we have now, um, because people had learned to grow like food and using hydroponics, and food was really important, you know, in terms of being healthy. Um, there was more of a um, a divide within different religions. There was more strife, more sort of you know, fighting between different uh, polarities within the culture or the politics uh, all over the world. And in this future life, she lived in a dome on that smaller planet. When she was high up on a building, on a skyscraper, she could even see the curvature of this planet. It was way smaller than Earth. And um, yeah, that's what she would do. And she like drove this futuristic vehicle. I forgot what it looked like, but that was a. Um, it was so interesting because it was so detailed. It sounded like, you know, the plot for a movie. Something. It was really interesting. It's so fascinating how much detail can come through. Yeah. Some of your sessions. It's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it because we don't really get information like that very often from people. And you are a good source for that. You know, I want to maybe emphasize like how to not attach to any kind of this is where we're headed on Earth because I've also had sessions where people would kind of be at the back end of um, reincarnation and kind of see that there were many, many, many different Earths all vibrating at a different uh, in a different plane, and that we, you know, these are the sort of the parallel lives that we can also choose to access. So there's parallel lives, there's different timelines, different <clears throat> worlds, because there's so many different parallel universes. Yes. So I know you exist in, you know, all of them pretty much, probably unless you died by this time, but you probably existed in some of them, um, many of them, countless, and I have. And I always feel like every time we are at a crossroads and we make a decision, the earth gets split into another two so just imagine how many people are on this planet making decisions and every single time. And those are more timelines, but I guess they're blurring the whole concept of timelines and parallel universes and things because um, they're all probabilities. There's a world of probabilities. There's a world of parallel universes. It's just a bunch of semantics then to go down that rabbit hole. Sometimes a little much, and it's only for certain people. So I won't get too much into that. I know my mind goes on the fritz when I really think about how that will work. It's just a web. I think just thinking about the world as a web is a lot easier to understand than trying to figure it out and try to think about the linear and the top, the bottom. When I think about it as a web and think about every point the spider web meets, I always think that about that as the one world. And I think about like, then there's like three-dimensional four dimensional webs. I'm like, I don't want to get into that. You know, sometimes I like to go down the rabbit hole, but I think my show is for simplicity sometimes as well. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to leave the heaviness of that behind. I'm going to go to something simpler because I know so many people love their furry animals, their best friends, their pets, and they want to know, they want to know, do their pets go through the reincarnation process as well? Sure. I've heard different options. Um, like I said earlier, your pet can be a guide or a guardian angel. It could also, I had a woman come in and her higher self told her in a session that she was going to get a dog and that the dog, this dog would contain part of her soul's energy. And it was done this way because when she was born, the environment she was in, her body could not hold this amount of her soul's energy. Um, And so she needed to grow up and have a life and evolve until the moment where she could merge with this soul's energy that was being brought in through her dog. I've had other experiences where um, like dogs and cats or pets are guardian angels. And then also, you know, just a soul evolving through the animal kingdom to become a human, um, become a human soul. What I've heard is that um, 
Yeah, I don't even like to mention it because people seem to want to make animals like, oh, they're just lesser experiences or lesser souls or something. So I've also heard that sometimes when souls choose to experience or move up through the the mineral kingdom, the animal kingdom to the human experience, that the soul is more of a collective or the animal spirit is more part of a, a soul's collection or it's split off into the soul splits off into different animals at the same time to just gain experience. That is an, an option. You know, I'm just letting you know about different options that I've encountered. There are so many options. And one of the reasons this question is asked so often is because people want their dead cats and dogs to come back. Yes. And I know that is for sure a thing Yes, where dog dies and jumps into another dog. So you get to have that same soul, the companion soul come with you. And I would assume that's in the case of a soul that's choosing to be your companion and uh, wants to be with you through your lifetime. So you feel like you have that strong bond, you might find yourself with another pet that will have that same emotional bond. Yeah. And I love that. I think, you know, in this world, we feel so alone sometimes. And it's nice to know that even though we have pets and their lives are so much shorter than ours, that we can maybe be with the same soul or guide for I'm, longer than the 15, 16 years that most cats or dogs live. I'm conditioning my cat to come back to me. <laughs> Please. I'm going to put a spell on it. <laughs> something I did want to say, and this is something that I've been wanting to talk to my viewers about in on TikTok and on Instagram, because I like to give little tiny little bite sized stuff on there is about what you said. You said that it's really important for you not to kind of marry yourself to an idea of what a future is like just because you heard someone experience a future experience. And what that made me think of immediately is psychics. Psychics, people that go to psychics and have a reading, they go to a psychic that's an incredible psychic that has been able to predict so many things and then they hear something and then they immediately say, okay, just because the psychic said, this is my future experience. And they reinforce that, even though it might not necessarily be something that they want. And they reinforce it and make sure that they choose and end up in that particular timeline that the psychic or the seer was able to see and basically become imprisoned by the prediction because the prediction became a self-fulfilled prophecy. Mm -hmm. So I always like to tell people, if you go see a psychic, this is not reincarnation talk, but I always tell people, if you go see a psychic, just know that they're only able to usually pick up on your strongest probable timeline at this moment, which is not what is always available to you. Usually you have access to endless timelines. And if you hear a psychic say something you don't like, just say, no, I'm going to choose a different route. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that if they say this person is not for you, you go chasing that person and make that person that doesn't love you, love you. It just means that if you, they say, like, for example, that you will never be successful or you'll never find love or uh, you will live a very short life, don't just accept it as fact. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. They can only see and their powers or their abilities are only able to be about one timeline. And this is, I think, very powerful when it comes to your work because you have your own experiences seeing people's futures for example, which will say the earth is about to explode or something or something will happen. And I would assume you would have to have that um, understanding so you don't walk around thinking, oh, shoot, their coasts are about to get destroyed. Correct. Yeah, I've had so many different options in terms of catastrophe and stuff or what can happen. And yeah, there are many differences, so I don't attach to it anymore. I'm like, okay, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if since we're talking about reincarnation, technically it doesn't really matter what happens because we're just going to jump out of the body and find something more suitable. Sure. But if, I mean, you know, I, I'm attached to my current human experience and I'm definitely, you know, concerned about, you know, climate and, and, you know, the political atmosphere in this country and because it affects my physical experience right now. Of course, of course. And that's not to say we should all just forget about everything. Uh, it's important to make sure that we live good lives and contribute 
but worst comes to worst. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's can... death is the only option, the other option. <laughs> yeah, we continue on. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the death process again. I remember reading the Seth material. I don't know if you've ever read that. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the Seth material, they said, because we are such strong creators that we cr create strongly when we die as well. We can create worlds, basically. There's instant manifestation, basically, when we die because the time aspect is gone. And people who believe they're going to go to hell, this was very interesting when I heard it. People that believe that they were going to go to hell, they're going to experience a hellish process after they die until their guides come and say, hey, you're just making that up right now. And you're choosing to create that because right now you're dead and you're creating what you expect. I just wanted to say that. That was part of the things that I'd learned. And I thought it's a cute thing to share, but not so cute. I've had that experience as well. You, you did? Yeah, yeah, very much so. That people... Sometimes going to an amorphous place where it's just light and love and, and, and oneness. And sometimes it has more shape like marble steps and columns and, you know, people looking like people, um, depending on the belief system, I think that they came out of that life. With. I'm going to jump out of reincarnation and go to death for a minute because although it could be its own episode, because I want to know when you die, who comes and greets you? Well, if you ask me, the experiences I've had is that there are loved ones from the current lifetime or other lifetimes that you've known. There can be guides, angels, ascended masters. Um, it seems to be kind of like a party. Um, it's a wonderful experience of reconnecting with loved ones and that help you sort of get acquainted to this new newer way of existing in this amorphous place. So my request to all my deceased loved ones and all my past deceased loved ones, just so they know while I'm doing this live on air, <laughs> is that once I die, people from this life that I'm familiar with, I want them to show up first so I can see them and then they can reintroduce me back to people that are maybe more profound in my soul's experience of infinite lives. Uh, because I kind of want to see my dead son first and other stuff. So I wonder if there's any kind of truth to that, to where I'd heard that maybe the more familiar faces will show up first, that you were just with or you had just lost to ease the transition. Hmm. But I have no idea. But, you know, I just read that. But we read stuff all the time and you experience stuff all the time. I've experienced different options. Um, but I, you know, you might see somebody that you recognize that it was your soulmate that you didn't get to live with at all in this life. And you get so much more excited to see that than to see someone like, for example, my son that I only got to see for four years. And they might've been a guide during the remainder of your lifetime here. That's also possible. Oh, it's just all so interesting. One last question I'm going to ask you, even though it's on a different episode is do we incarnate with the same people? And do we have a soul family and why? Yes, it seems like we do. <clears throat> Oftentimes people find themselves in a life with their soul family. And the why, you know, I've never really asked for it, but my 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 sense is that it's because it just feels more familiar. So we're not completely stranded in this alien, strange place. Um, but at least we have um, a sense of connection to others. It might also help us to to forge relationships when there is a sense of connection instead of just like passing each other and not recognizing each other. And my belief is that when we're out of this body, we are more of a collective, that we're less individual. I think that the whole concept of being separate and very individual is a very human process mm -hmm. or a human experience. So it would make sense that when you're dead, you are a collective or even your soul might split into many, many, many pieces or probably that's how soul families more even made and choose to come in and kind of support each other in this very interesting. All right. Is there anything you'd like to ask or add your own to this episode that you can think of before we say goodbye? I would ask people to 
value their life here. <clears throat> You're not here to do penance or to balance karma or to do a chore or to be God's little worker on the planet. Your soul chose to be here as you. So it seems that we're in this life to learn to fully embrace the uniqueness of who we are. And to do this is to learn to listen to our feelings and our inner musings and inner knowing um, to create a life that accommodates us rather than accommodating the antiquated paradigms that we've lived in for so long. And that this is the way that we're changing the world right now. It seems to be that we're in a period of spiritual awakening. And to do this, from my perspective, is not so much about preaching to other people what they should be and how they should think and how they should act, but to first and foremost learn to love ourselves and to inspire people, other people to do that for themselves by becoming the best version of ourselves, meaning to become the unique expression of source that we came here to be. I love that because we are all so individual, we're so different, and we all try to fit in and we want to feel like we're just like everyone else, but we are just like everyone else, but it's so important to appreciate our individuality and allow as much of that to shine. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I know there's so many questions that were there that we didn't cover, but it would have made this episode super duper long. But, and I love having you on the show multiple times. So thank you for coming here for the third time. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And by the way, my highest watched and rated episode, listened to episode was the one with you about with past lives. So thank you so much for having me have my very best episode. Thank you for having me on. I love your presence on the planet, the work that you're doing. So anytime. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for my viewers for watching and for my listeners for listening. Uh, please make sure to write a review and let us know what you think and submit questions and ideas for future shows because I'll be doing this for a very long time. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye.